Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back, or welcome to another Bangs Audio Review. Gonna sneak this one in before we head out on our camping trip. It is the Onyx Alpha 11T1, or I should say 11-1. XI1? <laughs> anyway, uh, I just realized that um, it actually, if you, if you turn it upside down, you've got XI right there. Interesting. Okay, so um, that stuff aside, uh, this is a little, and I do mean little, um, DAC amp, dongle DAC, I guess you would call it. How about this? Let's some measure in some <coughs> imperial measurements here. Uh, just over two and a half inches long, just about one and a half inches wide, and only about three quarters of an inch high. So yeah, you can easily uh, put this in your pocket with your phone. It does not take up a whole lot of room. Inside the box, Nice cute little box here. Actually, really nice little box. There you go. And then you get a USB-C uh, with a USB-A adapter uh, cable with it, which is also pretty handy. Not pictured here, because I think it's in the drawer of confusion at this point. Um, specs on this little guy. Uh, two Cirrus Logic uh, CS41-43198. So dual 43198 Cirrus Logic chips. Um, it goes up to 768 uh, PCM DSD 256 and then you've got your 4.4 millimeter balanced and your 3.5 millimeter single ended outputs uh, UAC 1 for gaming and UAC, UAC 2.0 for uh, you know more updated devices uh, sources etc um, it pretty much defaults to the UAC 2.0 if you want it to go to UAC 1, you have to do so when you plug it in. You have to be holding down this multi-function button, which we'll get into here. So as you can see here, it's in US UAC 2.0. Um, if you hold this button down, it puts you into the menu. You have two gain levels, low and high. Low, high, hopefully you can see that. Um, hit the button again. And you've got five filters to choose from non oversampling, fast, slow, low latency, fast, low latency, slow. So I'm thinking those are probably your gaming, you know, preferred settings for gaming. Um, I either use the uh, slow, well, I use slow, fast, and obviously non oversampling, depending on um, which headphones or which earphones I'm listening to. And it does have plenty of power, guys. Like it goes up to, uh, oh yeah, play pause as well. Uh, it goes up to 500 milliwatts in its um, balanced output, the 4.4 font select, balance left to right, brightness, screen saver, and then rotation, you can change the, the orientation of that. And then idle time. So if it's idle for too long, it automatically shuts down. Um, I usually use it on low gain because there hasn't really been a need to go to high gain on it, uh, at least not for IEMs. Um, but you may use that like if you have a little you know harder to drive headphones that you want to use with this you certainly can um, Just probably need to put it in high gain mode if the impedance is higher on your over-ear headphones But for IMs, plenty of power plenty of volume um, more than you'll probably ever need so um, These are the good things also the filters do definitely give you a different sound signature like it's hard for me to exactly describe it because it's not as simple as just like more bass more treble less bass less treble you know more mids whatever it just sort of slightly tweaks sort of the overall feel of it and so because there's five settings really three i think for normal audio use two for gaming but because there are five settings you really like for me i mean i could probably set it and forget it on the slow filter and not not ever worry about it again. Um, with the Canaris Celeste Relentless, which was the last set that I tested on this, I found that the fast or non oversampling filter was better because that set has so much bass to it, it helped to balance it out a little bit. Overall, it's a pretty neutral, I would say, neutral um, sort of sound signature. It does, it's not going to add a lot of anything to it, um, but it's very clean, it's very clear, highs are crisp bass you don't lose any impact like it's got yeah it's got really good clarity and transparency which is 
what you're kind of looking for, right? Um, insofar as the, well, I never actually did use 3.5, so um, I can't really speak to that, but I'm sure, I think it's like two, or maybe it was like 180 coming out of the 3.5. I think the only reason that you would not use a single-ended one is if you have hard to drive over your headphones. Um, if you're in 3.5 land with your IEMs, you're gonna, still going to get plenty of power out of it. Let's see if they actually uh, have a description of the power here. Okay, so uh, we're looking at 32, 768, low, high, serious logic, five filters, so far so good, signal to noise ratio, um, output, 4.0 volts at 32 ohms, 2.4 on the single ended, 4.0, 2.4 on the single ended, 4.0 on the balanced. Um, yeah, I know I read somewhere that it had like, it was 500 um, milliwatts. So I guess we do a little bit of math there. Um, you're probably looking at about, uh, yeah, 250, 280-ish on the single ended. In other words, plenty of power. Not a problem. Good portable size, plenty of power. Um, this little case, I think you could still get it if you order it now. If not, um, I almost like it better without the case. It's very like very good build quality, very nice finishes. The um, I think it's an OLED screen. Uh, is very clear, easy to read. Even though you know it's small, but volume up, volume down. I mean, it's hey, look, it's a hundred dollars super high quality you've got the dual DAC chips you've got like good amplification this is the only one if, if I had to choose one of all of my dongle DACs to use it would absolutely 100% be the Onyx Alpha for sure just provides I think the most performance versatility all of that good stuff for its price point now here is here here are the cautionary words okay unplug this if you have an older iPhone, <clears throat> first of all, you're going to need um, the Shanling L3 OTG cable, okay? This is just as a precaution, okay? Um, it's $20, it solved so many issues for me, connection issues for me with any of the dongle DACs that I couldn't actually really use before because of lack of connectivity. Um, the L3 is, is highly recommended, and I will link that again in the description. But here's the other part of it. Okay, on my iPhone, which is an iPhone 13 Pro Max, it the iPhone gets hot at the connection point, strangely enough, but very, 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 like, not hot, all right, very warm, let's call it very warm, all right? It's a little alarming to feel it get that warm, and this is over extended use, like, you know, a full hour or two, you just start to notice that warmth. The other thing that happens on the older iPhone, okay, let's put that caveat on it, and I can't speak to Android, is that the battery gets drained pretty fast. So in low gain mode, it was it was pulling, I would say after two albums, hour and a half, two hours, um, it had pulled half my battery down. Just like literally half of it was gone. I was like, wow. Now that's not horrible, right? We've seen worse. Um, but it still is something to note because honestly, it makes me hesitant to, well, not bring camping with me because I can't stream out there anyway, um, but it makes me just a little bit hesitant to recommend it if you have older, an older iPhone or an older Android and your battery is not in tip top condition, which after a couple, three years, let's face it, they're not. Now, if you have a newer phone, be it iPhone or Android, um, your battery is probably going to last longer. It's probably not going to warm up as much. It's probably going to be just fine. So this is really just a warning to uh, people with older, older um, phones. That's and that's it. Didn't have a problem with heat on the laptop. Uh, didn't have a problem with heat on my Hibby DAP. Even though you know I just wanted to try it. Even though the, the Hibby's got Cirrus in it anyway. Um, so yeah, it was just, it seemed to be an older iPhone issue. And that is my only caution. Other than that, it's a, f it's a full highly recommended. You know, when I am able to, 
next year, in a year, when I'm able to upgrade to the iPhone 16 or 17 or whatever is going on at that point, I'm sure it won't be an issue and neither will that. So um, performance was great off of the iPhone outside of the heat. Performance was great off of the laptop. Um, it competed with the Fio K11. Uh, I would say it held up against that fairly well. Uh, not as much power, of course, but you know, if you don't need it, you don't need it. So uh, for $109, regular retail, it's a go. And you should be able to, you know, it's, there's always stuff going on on Ali for coupons or whatever. You should easily be able to get this for under $100. And for under $100, I don't think that there's a better dongle DAC out there. It's got the specs, it's got the internals, it's got the performance, it's got the power. The nice little things like the screen and the finishes and the dual outputs. Yeah. Pretty awesome stuff. All right. That's all the wife's going to let me get away with for the day. Um, I will link this in the description on um, AliExpress so you can, you know, check it out there along with the Shanling L3 OTG lightning cable. And that's going to wrap it. I'll see you guys in about a week. Uh, I'll miss you. And uh, if I can touch base out there, I will. Um, but last time <laughs> it was not possible. No cell signals out there. So, all right. Love y'all. Nothing but peace to you. We'll see you.